Hi guys, gals, and non-binary pals, it is Shimmy Shea here. Today, I have started a small show kind of thing called The Video Diaries, which is what you are about to watch. There are eight episodes in the show, and I would like to preface by saying everything in the show is fictional and is purely for entertainment purposes, and entertainment purposes only. Hope you guys enjoy it and have fun watching. not really I just let things happen and I need to talk about it even though I've been doing better so first things first I got a septum I feel super cool I got this with Daisy who by the way missed me too Daisy actually ended up being the one who gave me all of the notes in my locker she said she didn't mean to come off as like pushy and that's why she started giving a break and just decided that she needed to meet up with me to talk to me So we did! I'm so happy. We have been talking a lot again. Also, I was wrong. We are not moving from this house. But my dad was. And he's gone now. Which is fantastic. I love living with my mom alone. It's the absolute best. I think they filed for a divorce a while ago back when dad and I had that weird conversation. I just think that they were better at hiding it at first when problems started, and now they're not. Oh, don't attack me, cat. Stop. I'm sorry. Pets him again, that's probably a bad idea. I'm not gonna do that. Daisy, so cool. I am so happy that I'm talking to her again. It's, it's been easier. She helped me catch up in the assignments that I missed during class, and she was just telling me that she tried to warn me that Alex was, like, moving away, and she'd heard Ella starting rumors about me, which is why she was talking about Ella, and she was like, Ella isn't as close as Matt, with Matt as she says she is, which is true. I kind of already knew that. But now I have confirmation that that is the truth, so that's, that's really cool. It's also really cool that I'm not alone anymore. That's, like, the best. Literally, we got ice cream. She congratulated me on turning 17, which was, like, the first time that someone had said something nice about it. Most people just were like, ah, now that you're 17, you'll get an even bigger charge, which, by the way, is still innocent. And she said that she believed in my innocence because she knew that I would never do something like that. I'm honestly so <laughs> grateful that I have her in my life. Um, it's been refreshing having someone who actually kind of understands more than the average person and after Matt passed I didn't think I'd be close with anyone again but ever since that day at the diner the second I walked in I saw her and I knew like it all clicked like I walked in and I saw the bright blonde hair and I looked down and I was like Daisy it explained everything so Quickly. The look she had been giving me, the reason why she knew about the treehouse, she wasn't stalking me. She knew about the treehouse because we were friends in elementary school. I just, once again, overthought it. I even sat down and I was like, I bet if Matt were alive, he would have known it was you who, were, who was giving me the notes. And she was like, a hundred percent. And then we just sat there and looked at each other and then we both laughed. It it was amazing. I 
didn't know that I could miss a person as much as I missed her. And I'm also grateful that I can miss a person as much as I miss her. But I'm more so grateful for the fact that I did miss her so much. Which, speaking of being grateful, I no longer have a therapist. Which means that will make my runaway plan one step easier. However, as usual, I go one step forward and three steps back. It's going to be even harder to get out without crazy control freak mom realizing what's happening. But to add to the bad things, Daisy, how am I going to leave her? I just got her back. I don't think I can. And look, I, I think I'm going to ask her to run away with me, which, hear me out, hear me out. Yes, it sounds like a bad idea. I don't care. Um, because I have a car this time. We don't have to meet up in the middle of the night at some sketchy bus stop. It can just be like an after school on a Friday. I'll be like, let's hit LA. Because just like me, Daisy thinks high school is dumb. She thinks it sucks. Daisy wants to be a model. Do you need high school to be a model? Absolutely not. She can just get a GED. She even said it herself. She was like, oh yeah, if I were you, I would have dropped out and just gotten my GED because high school's dumb. What a smart woman. So I really want to like bring up the plan to, why did I say two like that? I really want to bring up the plan to Daisy. And just mention it and be like, hey, Daisy, um, we should go to LA. That sounds really stupid. I should say it like, you hate high school. I, no, that's an even worse start. I don't know how I'm going to say it to her, but I want to. I haven't even told her I'm planning on it. I feel like she's going to think I'm stupid if I say it. Like, if I'm like, yeah, so... I actually am going to run away like I originally intended and then she's gonna be like hey Rachel remember how that went last time what if she says that I have a car though which is more than I had last time all I'm gonna need is gas money it's gonna be easy I've been taking pictures of these girls that they pay me because professional photographer swag anyways they pay me so i have enough gas money and i have enough for a hotel if i really wanted one which i don't because my scholarship got accepted next fall i'm going to be a student which like yeah i'll fail the rest of the semester but i can make up those credits at my new school Rachel Roberts, photographer from Lamont High School. Do you know how good that sounds? It sounds good. She could she could apply for a scholarship too. I mean, she's she's really smart. She's been helping me with my schoolwork anyways, and she does better than I do. So I could just I could just mention the high school to her. I could be like, hey, um, this is gonna sound crazy, but I still wanna get the heck out of here. This time, I formulated a better plan. I have a scholarship at a private high school. You should apply so we could go together. <gasps> I wouldn't have to be alone. I wouldn't have to deal with my mom. I wouldn't have to feel bad for my dad. I should tell him. I didn't even think of that. I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't even know where he's moving. Oh, I do. He said he was going to a hotel to figure stuff out. When they said that they were filing for a divorce originally, they made it sound like we were all moving, just like separately. And I was like, oh, so maybe there would be like a court case. No, they haven't even technically like legally done anything with it yet. He just moved out. It's so unfair. My mom is so controlling over him and me. He could come to LA. Probably won't want to. It's it's cross country. I'm so dumb. 
I'm not dumb. That's a horrible thing to say. I very smart fly got a scholarship. Best news in a while. Um, I remember the last time I was talking about Lamont High School, I had submitted an essay for it all about Matt and just like how I met him, how amazing our friendship was. And then I talked about the fact that he died and I ended the essay with, we still don't know who the murderer is, but I solely swear we will figure it out. And if that we has to turn to I, it will. I'm so glad that they liked it and like they said it was inspiring which is why I was like maybe my video diaries are more inspiring than I thought they were because like sure this isn't written work it's technically not even a work it's just me ranting to a camera but I feel like if I put this out in the public somewhere someone someday might stumble across it and be like hey what's this and then watch them all and say hmm interesting a human with feelings that are complex quite a deal with murder and i figured it out haven't figured it out yet but i will figure it out and that's the important piece it's been like unmotivating i haven't really gotten farther it's not Ella. I I don't know who it is. But it has to be someone and it has to be someone I know. It was planned. It was calculated to the point that the cameras on the streets didn't see that person's face. That person knew where Matt lived. I should write this down. Like, if the police can't do it, they can't put the dots together. It's someone who knows both Matt and I. It's someone who knew that Matt and I were running away together. It's someone who knew where Matt lived. Because they waited for a moment where he was going to be alone and vulnerable. They waited. Whoever did this wanted the opportunity and then they saw it, so they took it. It was perfectly calculated the timing everything so calculated that they knew he wasn't gonna try to reach out to me maybe Matt didn't tell me because he didn't know who it was imagine he died and he, he didn't even know who's doing it their face was covered they could have just not said anything and killed him. But even if they did that, it doesn't change the fact that they knew where he was coming from and they knew where he was going. The deputy said that they, they dragged his body to an alley, just left it. They wanted people to find it. They wanted people to know, and they wanted people to think it was me. You know what they didn't want? To get caught. They didn't want someone to put together that they knew both of us. They didn't want that. They didn't want someone to think that they knew, and they didn't want someone to think that they left their house, because that's a pretty early time to leave the house. has to be someone who lives in like a residential area because where else would the lights have been like they had to have followed the person to understand that it was a person who killed him because they killed him outside so they had to have followed the lights which means that the person has to be in a specific area but I don't know that far because I'm not a police officer. I wish the deputy could like update me, but unfortunately, since I'm a suspect or whatever, he can't. It's garbage. 
in the back of my mind I keep thinking like what if they do still arrest me what if they just get so tired of the case and they're like a eh, cold case just gonna arrest all suspects can they do that that would really set back my plan that I just got that would really be bad I hope that doesn't happen because I did just speak that into existence. But it is such a help figure out like who it was. I've been hanging out with it like nonstop ever since the diner. It's nice having a friend, another human. Like and she has so many cool things to say and so many cool things to talk about like she dropped out of um all of her ap classes oh, and went into regular ones <coughs> she said she'd rather just get good grades than strive really hard to get average grades i understand that me too that's why I never took AP. Probably not a flex. I don't care though. It's whatever. It's a flex to me. My mom loves her. She says that she thinks Stacy's a good influence on me. I don't really care what she thinks. I'm still mad at her. I wish that it was dad who got to stay at the house instead of her. I wonder if Kaylin even knows that he moved out. She hasn't really reached out to me that much. Other than the occasional, hey sis, how have you been? Crappy. All I want to say is, hey, Kaylin, um, well, <laughs> Matt's still dead, and we still don't know if he did it. <laughs> How are you, though? But I can't be angry. I've chosen to not be angry anymore, so I don't say that. Instead, I say, still crappy. Are you any better? And she always says no. And I say... I'm sorry things have been so tough, but she leaves me an open until the next check-in. It's like a video game. Checkpoint! Sister checks in on you. Pew, pew, pew. Next level! I don't think that's a next level. It's just a checkpoint in the middle of the level. The level's kind of like half between the checkpoints. Like the checkpoint's like... Pew, middle. Go to my locker. Checkpoint. Oh. Figure out who put the note. And like my next checkpoint should be soon. When that happens, I'm gonna be like, well, considering that mom and dad got divorced. Whew. I don't know. I shouldn't drop it to her like that. I should call her. I mean, it definitely doesn't help that I don't reach out to my sister. Because if I did, then... We would talk more, so I am 50% of the problem with our lack of communication. So, to do list one, call sister, check on her, make sure she knows that mom and dad are no longer together. Two, tell Daisy about Plan LA. And I think that's it. Oh, yeah. And of course, the big three. Figure out who killed Matt. Which, you know, has been on the list forever. But like, it's at the bottom of the list. Because it's going to be the hardest one to complete. Thing one and two, like, yes, they're difficult. Because emotionally challenging. Like, I'm going to have to tell my sister about mom and dad breaking up. I should also tell dad though that I'm gonna leave. I don't wanna tell him yet. Not now anyways. 
I'll tell him after I figure out who did it. And then that's when I'm gonna leave. Figure out who did it and I'll just quit all my classes for the rest of the year, which it's almost summer. It's already March. So that's technically almost summer. I won't really be missing out on that much. Sure, whatever, I'll fail the semester. I really don't care. I might get like a D in one of my classes if I leave now, but like, it's worth it though. To start a new life, to go to a private high school in LA, in a dorm, that's gonna be exciting. And I have a car now, which is even cooler. But I have to tell my dad at some point. He said he'd support me. And if he doesn't support me, I'll just be like, Dad, you can't go back on your promises. That's breaking a promise, which is technically illegal. And if he's like, illegal by who? I'll be like, I just said it's illegal, which means that you're breaking a law. I think that's the best reasoning I have come up with in a long time. Anyways, I have to start on my to-do list before I forget it. 